Okay, my friends, so there's the experiment I originally did. Here's the experiment Wendy and I just did. Uh, and here's the overall total of 40 uh, spins that we did all together. We're still trying to do the same thing. We're trying to estimate when you spin a penny, how often does it land heads up? Okay, so um, we got to do the sample proportion plus or minus its margin of error. And that's going to give us our 95% our confidence interval in this case. Okay, so this is going to be 16 out of 40. Okay, 16 out of, what's that, 8 twentieths? That's going to be 40%, I think. Yeah, 40%. Point 0.4. Uh, plus or minus. Uh, I just come down here. I'll just use the decimal. 0.4. So 40% heads, which is closer to 50% now. Closer than that 25% we had before. Anyway, 40% uh, heads. Okay, plus or minus. Now we're going to use 95% confidence again. So that's 1.96 multiplier. Uh, 0.4 times 0.6, which is the, the chance of uh, overall chance of tails now, divided by 40. Okay, let's go back to the computer, calculate this thing, then come back and see what it tells us. Uh, let's let's use a different tool. I, 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 as I was typing that last thing in Google, I got a feeling that some of you might not like it very much. Um, so let's use a Desmos Scientific Calculator. And Jesus, I didn't spell half of those words right. Um, and I think some of you actually probably end up using this, which is actually, it's a really cool little, um, little calculator. So 1.96 times square roots down here. Okay, this is very good. Now I wanna put a fraction in there, right? I gotta put a fraction in. Yep, 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 yep. So 0.4 times 0.6 all divided by uh, 40. Good, 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 very good, very good. So that, that's gonna give us, an, uh, we got a percentage here of 50. 15%. Let's use that 15% and as our margin of error and see what it tells us. Okay, my friends. So now we know that our confidence interval is going to be uh, 0.4 plus or minus uh, 15%. So if we add and subtract 15% from 40%, if we go down, that's 25%. And if we go up, that's 55%. Huh. So based on a sample of 40 coins spun, we can't tell that there's a difference between spinning and flipping. And do you see why? 50% is in there now. 50% is in that range. In the previous range we did, 50% was not in that range. So that's statistical evidence that they're different. This is spinning range. 50% is flipping. It's not a range. We assume it's exactly 50% with coins because, well, number one, they've been flipped for millennia to make decisions, number one. And number two, since the coins are weighted in such a way that when you flip them in the air and interrupt the flip, it's assumed to be 50-50. Now, the first interval, though, we saw showed that spinning was different, but it was only based on 20 trials. As soon as we increase the trials to 40, we double them. Now it looks like there's not a difference between them. Mm. Okay. I didn't want to have to do this, but it's going to be too long to replicate an experiment I've already done. As it turns out, I've been doing this experiment for many, many, many years. Let's go dive in to look at all that old data, number one. And also, let's take a look at a statistical tool I have built for you so you don't have to do all this.